I'm here at Chester Zoo in the monsoon forest, which on the 15th of December 2018 was devastated by a major fire that ripped through the building, causing a widespread evacuation of the animals and all visitors at the zoo. We've come back a year on from that fire to find out how the rebuild is going and how it is Chester Zoo has managed to rise from the ashes of such a devastating fire. So let's chat to one of their officers that's helped with the rebuild. I did actually believe it to, be, to begin with. Um, I, uh, it was only when I was actually travelling here to the zoo I could see the smoke and flames coming from uh, the top of this building. Uh, shock, um, sadness, uh, frustration, anger. We have a, an on-call duty team. Uh, I was on call that weekend. Um, phone started ringing. Uh, Looking, I live about 10 minutes away from the zoo and was in here quite quite quickly. Um, and uh, we have a, um, got a bronze, silver and gold command structure here at the zoo to deal with all sorts of major incidents and events. Being here today to see the amount of work that's going on here, I'm really pleased to see the, the whole building's been stripped right back. And the reason we've done that is to make sure that there's absolutely no contamination within that building whatsoever. Um, you know, the, the building was soot damaged. Uh, uh, the ETA for roof, the plastic roof, when it melted, did um, cause some contamination within the building. So we've had to strip everything out. All the plants and trees, all the soil and the subsoil have all been removed uh, and we're starting afresh again. And what we want to do is to get the heating back onto this building uh, very early in the new year. The reason for that is we, can, we need to create this um, uh, uh, tropical environment for the plants and trees that will be coming back here in the spring. Because the plants and trees are coming from a tropical environment, then we can only transport them in the springtime when the weather is a little bit better. So come April time, we'll hopefully we'll start to get the plants and the trees uh, replanted here. Then very swiftly afterwards, we'll start to move the animals who are all in the zoo, in other places at the present time, in temporary locations, back into this building uh, and then hopefully open it for some time in the summer. So now we're in the realm of the red ape where as you might be able to see behind me we've got a Sumatran orangutan um, called Subis who was actually one of the animals that was rescued from the monsoon forest on the day of the fire. You might be able to make it out but maybe not that clearly. Subis has got um, a two week old baby that she's kind of hiding away there and um, that's been born since she's been moved back into the realm of the red ape. So now we're going to chat to Mike who was involved in the evacuation effort on the day and making sure that all of the animals were moved out safely. The day of the fire, our priority is, is people and has to be to start with. As, as soon as we're beyond that immediate safety, uh, then our priority actually was, was the animals closest to the fire. So a monsoon forest was a big house, largest tropical house in the UK, in the zoo. And so actually there was big areas of it that weren't affected at all by the fire. And then there are other areas which were right by the seat of the fire where it occurred. And so obviously our priority was to, to evacuate those animals first. Well, the very first ones actually that we were that we were busy trying to get accounted for and make sure were safe were the Sumatran orangutans that we can see behind us. Sumatran orangutans and uh, the silvery gibbons that, that lived with them uh, were in enclosures that were right around where the fire started. So they were our immediate priority. And, and actually it's a real testament to the fact that those keepers have worked with them for so long and have such a close bond with the animals that we were able to do things so quickly and so efficiently. So our priority on the day was actually to, to get the animals outside of the house, into their outside uh, habitats, shut them out so that they were then excluded from the fire and that also enabled us to fight the fire safely. Uh, and then the evacuation actually took several days after that to get every single animal to come uh, come to us, be fed, get into crates and enable them to move. So it wasn't really till the end of the following week that we were moving the very last animals away from the monsoon forest. It's not just the fire. For an old male orangutan like Pulu here, uh, they don't move very well anyway. In the wild they would live in their the territory defend it and when they get old that's it they never move they defend that territory so there's added complications in moving animals than, than there are in moving people. On, on the day uh, things could have been so different if it hadn't uh, been for the expert uh, actions of the staff and all of the emergency services involved so it's delightful to see them so happy especially to see uh, a new baby here with Subis is real sort of icing on the cake and to see the Sumatra and Orangutan group doing so well is, is just fantastic. So we've seen some of the incredible work that Chester Zoo are doing to rebuild after the fire and now we're going to chat to Joe who's going to explain to us where all of the money that was so kindly donated is going both in the zoo and helping in projects around the world. One proportion of the money went uh, to our projects in Southeast Asia. We do already a lot of work in Southeast Asia, but with that um, generous money that the people donated, we could uh, get more projects um, off the ground. We can protect more species. One example is uh, in Borneo. The uh, Borneo Nature Foundation is one of our partners. They work in, a, in an area on Borneo um, where they have a peat swamp forest. And because in the last decades, uh, this peat swamp was drained, 
land for agriculture purposes and for logging purposes. Um, it's very dry now, it, it burns like coal and now with long droughts and climate change it started burning really really badly. So uh, in these forests there are 6,000 orangutans, so a, a large proportion of, um, of the overall orangutan population and they are all um, threatened by this fire. The money went now to support the community uh, fire, fire protection um, teams to, to go to that area and to fight against the fire. They do this since months and they, they can't uh, um, follow their usual jobs so they lose salary, they need equipment to do that. It's a dangerous job because the fire is very unpredictable. Uh, this is where the money went. So we protect the animals in the area but also the people who lose homes and who suffer from the really bad air quality. So the money um, that was donated was, was uh, for this purpose of, of helping the animals um, uh, that suffered from the fire. They obviously don't only uh, suffer here in the zoo from that particular day when, when the monsoon forest um, was on fire, but the animals in the wild also suffer from fire. So um, there's a very nice link between that, that we can help the animals in their natural habitat as well. We've spent a day here at Chester Zoo learning how they're rebuilding after a fire devastated the monsoon forest. One year on it's incredible to see the amount of progress that's been made towards bringing the zoo back to where it was before the fire. We've also seen some of the animals that were involved in the fire and how it is they've been cared for and moved on to other areas of the zoo as well as learning about what the vital money that was raised by people that so kindly donated, what that's doing all over the world. Thank you very much.